Okay, that's very weird. I'm not sure what's happening there. But my recorder just shut off all by itself. I don't understand what happened. I did it twice. Hmm. Okay. Alright, it's working now. Okay, I'm going to attempt this again. Let's close that. Okay, so where we where I originally started was uh, the argument about the name of uh, the people using the name Yeshua and how there's so much hatred surrounding it. Um, that was very interesting. I don't understand what happened there. But anyway, we're going to skip over that. Um, I'll share that some other time. Or I'll share it on the community tab later. Uh, so we'll get into what we're talking about. So anyway, I have a video that I shared. In fact, let me show you. And oh, it back clean out. Okay. Let's just stick with this. So <coughs> having technical difficulties this morning, not sure what's going on. Anyway, um, the, there's a video that I just shared on my community tab. I shared it last night by Michael Heisner. Uh, I recommend you watch that video. I'm going to share another video involving some different information that coincides with or, or seems to support what he Michael had come up with and discovered. And I recommend you watch both those videos in conjunction with each other. Because what it does, it paints a, it paints a very interesting timeline. Now, if we go and look at what Michael Heisner discovered and what the other video shows as far as a, a record of the events surrounding Christ's birth, death, and resurrection, we see a time frame established from May, March, May, or March, April, May, most of it seemed like it was pointed to May, out to September as the uh, section of months where Christ was born and died and was resurrected. We see a, a time frame, a summer time frame. Remember, we've talked about this. Everything that I see in the Bible seems to point to summer. Um, you go to the book of Ruth, which is a picture of the entire scenario. And we see the, the, the representations of the rapture in there. And we see the time frame that it falls in. We go back into, it's a, it's a summer time frame. We go into the stuff that, uh, the records that are going to be on the other video I'm going to share. And the, the information that Michael Heisner found, which is obviously other records. And we see a, a time frame falling between May and September. What's interesting is the year. Because both of these videos, two completely different time frames, two completely different sets of information, two completely different people, come up with 3 BC as the birth year of Christ, which coincides with the other information we have. That would put his death and resurrection in the year 30 to 31 BC, which is very interesting. So that we can safely assume he was in his 31st it was in the 30 year 31, but the Bible records he was in his 33rd year. You go back to the birth date of 3 BC, and that puts you right there where you're supposed to be. Perfect. So if we're going to assume, and we can go by the scripture and see that God is very consistent in what he does and gives very specific timelines, and we're going to say that it is a 2,000 year age of grace, which fits the biblical timeline and the genealogies that are given in the Bible for the greats of the Bible, then it's fairly safe to assume, and even doing research, you can come to the same conclusion, that the end of that age of grace would be 2031, 2,000 years later, to the year. Now, we can't pinpoint the date exactly, but we can calculate to the year. I find this interesting because if Christ is going to run which would be the 7,000th year, the year of the millennial reign of Christ. And there's no if to it. We know it's going to happen. The Bible says it's going to happen. Well, that's going to be a complete 1,000 years, just like the Bible says. So now you back up a little. Where would that 1,000 year? My phone is doing some weird stuff here. I wonder if those 
uh, coronal mass ejections are messing with it. They said it was going to affect electronics. So if we're in the year 2031 as the end of the 2000 year age of grace, and I'm just going by information we have from the Bible and, and a couple of other sources associated with it. And Christ is going to do a thousand year millennial reign, which would happen from 2031 on, which would be from 20, 2031 to 3031. 3031 is an interesting date that other research has discovered too. Quite, quite interesting. That means the seven-year tribulation would have to come before. Now, we know the millennial reign starts right after the tribulation. So you can start in 2031 and back up seven years. But where does that put you? Exactly. Now, we go into the book of Daniel, Daniel 12 more specifically. You guys have... If you saw the video I did where I showed you that that count, that day count, and what if that wasn't days, but what if it was years, like the rest of the book of Daniel? When you count it, it brings us to the year 2021, which is quite interesting. We're in a 10-year gap right now. You've heard me mention 10 years before. We're in a 10-year gap right now, which you take seven years off of that. What does that give you? So if we have a seven-year tribulation falling in the next 10 years, and when we read in the scriptures, we see a, a pretty clear gap of time in some of the events that are precursors to this, what does that tell us? Well, it, to me, it's confirmation that we are in the final, literally the final moments. We're in the final 10 years of the events spoken of in the Bible, minus the millennial reign. Now, a lot of people are going to run with this and say he's predicting the rapture. Well, obviously I am. The rapture is going to happen during this time frame. It has to. Now, depending on what you believe, it could be at the end. It could be at the beginning. I like to lean more towards the blessed hope, like the Bible refers to it as, and say it's going to be at the beginning. What does that tell us? We're in that window, literally in the window. What does that mean? Look up. If we have information that specifically pinpoints dates and years, and we can count this out, and it fits everything the Bible is telling us, we're there. We're right there. There's no reason why we shouldn't not be excited. There's no reason why we should be forlorn and depressed. We're there. The Lord is coming. We're not obviously not going to be able to pinpoint the exact day, but the hope that comes from this is we can see the end of the line. Now, 2,000 years ago, they probably had no idea that, 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 that this was a thing. They weren't doing the calculations. And most of them didn't even have all the information like we have now. We have access to all the original languages and everything. We have access to other documents that have been found in the last 50 to 70 years. <clears throat> this helps us pinpoint much more accurately what the Bible was telling us. We can put the puzzle pieces together and we start to come up with a completed puzzle. To the point that we can predict the year that these events will unfold. Now, again, God is sovereign. I'm not going to speak on something I don't know about. I'm not going to speak on something that's on his timeline. And the Bible very clearly says these are, there are certain things that are within, are going to stay within his understanding and not be given to us because there's reasons. But we can see there's a lot of stuff that's being spoken of in the Bible that hints to a lot of this information also. What did the seven thunders speak? We don't have that information. Sure would be nice if we did, because I bet it tells us a lot. But again, we have a specific uh, written record of the years events happened. That gives us the ability to count forward. That gives us the ability to lay the timeline together and go, whoa, we're within 
three year window. What could happen in that three year window? A lot. What's the major event we're watching? The rapture. The rapture's coming. I can safely say it's already here. We're just watching for the events to unfold. I'm at the point now where signs don't even matter anymore. I know we're right there. I'm watching it happen real time. I'm waiting for the graves to open. Literally. I'm not joking about this. I'm expecting at any time to go make a run into town, drive past a graveyard, and, and there's going to be graves blown open. <laughs> it happened when Jesus was resurrected. No, no reason to not be able to assume that it's going to happen again. Could be wrong, but... I'm going by what the scriptures say. What this does is this creates a sense of hope. I'm like you all. I don't love this world anymore. This world is beautiful. There's the creation, such a diversity of beauty. It is unparalleled. But I don't love this world anymore because of society and sin. Because of evil and the devil. I want to be with the Lord. I want to be with him and stand in his presence and be safe. Because I know that I'm not safe in this world unless I have the Lord's protection. I desire to be with him. I desire to go and be where he is. I'm loving his appearing. I, I'm, I'm so looking forward to his appearing. Looking forward to when I can stand before him. To the point it, it brings tears. Because I, I so want... To be away from the pain that is in this world. And not the pain the world has given me, the pain the people have given. Because of the cruelty of man. And for the payment and the, the destruction of sin. But looking at this information, and when you watch those two videos, you'll understand much more what I'm talking about. When you watch those two videos... I can look at this time. I can go by Daniel 12. I can go by Daniel 7. Several other chapters. Several other books. I can look at the count. I can look at the events. I can take the information given in the two videos I'm going to share on the community tab. I can look and see what this is telling us. And what it's telling us is we're in the final 10 years of the Age of Grace. And seven of those years are tribulation. Folks, we need to be looking up. Pray for everyone you can. Share the gospel wherever you can. Look up. And glory in the Lord because he is he's on approach. Or he's already here. It's just the times are, are assembling. The, the events are coming together. Prophecy is being fulfilled. It is amazing. It's encouraging. It brings hope. It brings comfort to look at this, to count these days out and go, whoa, wait a minute. 23rd, 3 BC, 20, or 31 AD, 2031, 2021. We're in the final 10 years. And if seven of those years are bad, we know there's that little age, that little gap of time. What did Jesus say? That day won't overtake you as a thief. You know the signs. You know what's coming. You are watching and paying attention. The rest of the world, they're, they're ignoring this. They're like, ah, oh, yeah, you guys are crazy. It's nothing. Well, no, no. We have more confirmation now. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have more confirmation now. We're watching more. This is glorious. Because if we have that close and specific of a time count and it fits within the biblical narrative, we know it's about as accurate as we can get. Down to the year. Now again, the placement of the rapture and the timing of the rapture, we don't know that. We can't know that. We don't know when that's going to fall, whether it's going to be the, the very beginning of the tribulation which in that case we have a few more years, whether it's going to be before, there's going to be a gap of time because we know there has to be a whole lot of events that have to unfold and it takes time for those events to unfold to set up for that time frame. But you know what? I'm looking at this and I'm like, this is it. 
This is it. We are in the year of wonders, the Shemitah year, according to the Jewish calendar. The enemies of Israel have presented themselves and have their armament in place. The famines, the pestilences, the diseases, all are running rampant right now. We see them happening everywhere. The totalitarian one world government, one world religion is all happening. In 2019, the end of 2019, we saw the beast made up of the different types of animals, which we can literally point to the countries they are, the new revised Roman Empire being born. We saw the beast with seven heads and ten heads, ten horns being born, the two systems that are going to operate on this earth during that time frame. The Euphrates River, one of the major events in the Battle of Armageddon, the Euphrates River dries up and the, what is it, 200 million man army marches up it and we know what nation has, the only nation in the world that has a 200 million man army. We know where they're located. The river is drying up and we're going to get, I mean, well, we won't get to see it, it'll happen at a different time, but we're seeing all the events spoken of in that time frame, in the Bible, happening real time right before our eyes that is your hope because that shows you we're there now other people will say this is crazy okay well you you show me how that's not applying to that you show me how that doesn't apply when the bible specifically says that see again we get back to the argument the word of god is it true or not and most people don't believe it's true and to me that's a sorry excuse to not have faith and to not walk in God's statutes and to not believe. Brothers and sisters, look up. This is it. And we have more proof than we've ever had showing us this is it. Walk in faith in your Lord. When people ask you, why are you so happy with everything going on? I say, my Lord is here. I'm just waiting for him to come get me. You can go too, but you got to make a decision. Let them see our light and wonder. Look at all this world. Look at everything's falling apart. Why are they so happy? I wonder why they're so happy. Maybe because they know something the rest of the world refuses to acknowledge. That we're in the final ten years of this age of grace. Seven of those years most likely are going to be very bad. That means there's only a couple of years. Three years less than three years where amazing things are going to take place. So you always have to remember that the events spoken of in the Bible aren't going to be instantaneous. There's going to be a, a, an amount of time associated with them unfolding. People look and they read about the trumpets. They read about, you know, and then the Bible literally describes in the days of the blowing of this trumpet. It's not an instantaneous event. It's there are days surrounding all this. There's time surrounding these things. A lot of them overlap. When you look at the book of Revelation and you read it and you're like, wait a minute, this is not talking about an instant moment. This is a frame, a, a block of time where these things are going to unfold. You start to realize exactly how this is going to play out. It takes a lot of verses and it causes them to make sense. And then you realize, ah, from God's perspective, it's instant. Hence, the, some of the descriptions we have, but we know that they're here. It will take time to unfold, which changes the narrative everyone's been given. All the people that are saying that Mystery Babylon is the literal city of Babylon, well, then now they have to explain why it's going to take, you know, 80 to 150 years to establish that nation in order for it to fit the biblical description. Hmm. Well, that changes the timeline a lot. And since we have actual records that show us the timeline, that blows that argument out of the water, doesn't it? Guys, you can have hope in this. You can, the more you see, the more it should cause you to be more encouraged. The more that people attack you and mock you for this, the more it should encourage you. Because the Bible said it was going to happen just like that. And we are in that final time frame. 2 Timothy 4.8 says, Finally, this is Paul speaking, 
Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Do you love the appearing of the Lord? I'm not just talking about, yes, I, I, I know the Lord is coming. I, I'm, no, no, no. Do you love it? Do you love that he is coming to remove his people? He is coming to exact justice on evil to reestablish his kingdom, to set everything back up the way it's supposed to be, to put things right, to do the Father's will. Do you love his appearing? Now, you need to know that this appearing and this judgment, people you know and love, people that are close to you, may be on the wrong side of this. Do you still love his appearing? See, it's not about loving that people are going to go to a different place. It's loving that the right thing, God's will, True justice and truth will be done. It's a different way of understanding. Will we still mourn? Yes. God said he's going to wipe away every tear when the time is right. But do you love him and his justice over everything else? Do you put him first? If you do, you love his appearing. Do you put him and faith in him above everything else? Guys, we can see the finish line from here. And it's closer than we all realized. We were on that track where we rounded the corner. And there was a bunch of trees there we couldn't see. And all of a sudden, we're at that, at that straight stretch. We are on the straight stretch. Going right to the finish line. We're there. We are there. You should be walking around in joy and smiling and happy. And when people are like, what is wrong with you? I'm a believer. I'm saved through Jesus Christ. That's what's wrong with me. I'm infected with his faith and his righteousness. I love him. I care for him. I long to see him. I can't help but be happy because I know we're at the end of the age. And he's about to appear. And I know through faith I'm on the right side of this. Come over here where we're at. Come on this side. And you can have this joy too. Because we know through Paul's words, there's a crown waiting for this. And it's a special crown. It's a crown that is only given to those specific people. Many will be saved, but not everyone gets this crown. Notice he says, to all who have loved his appearing. Notice he says it is a crown of righteousness to those who loved righteousness. Folks, walk in the faith of Jesus Christ today. Walk in the love of our God today. Walk in the knowledge of knowing we are at the end of the age predicted of in the Bible. Bible prophecy is coming true right before our eyes. All the biblical evidence we need that is in the world today is rising up out of the ground, showing us that this word, bar none, is the most accurate thing we have. And that nobody can refute this as hard as they try. Walk in faith. Believe God. Don't believe man. And you too will have this joy and this hope and will love his appearing. And you too will have a crown of righteousness waiting for you when you stand before the Lord. Of all the crowns, this is the crown I think I will want the most. How many people don't love his appearing because they have a, a messed up understanding of it? And there's anger associated with their belief. That goes against the Bible. Let us stand in awe of our Lord and what he is doing, of our God and how his hands work. Because we get to see it work. It's awesome. This world has really caused so many of us to be indifferent about so many things. And I've talked to you guys before about being stoic about... Get out of here. About being stoic about the things that are happening. But to never let love fall. Always keep love in the forefront. Sometimes you're going to have to be indifferent to certain things that are happening and, and because you can't affect it. you got to let it go. 
Jesus said, "Why? if you can't make your, add one hour to your life, why are you worried about anything else? He's right. But now is our time to get excited. If we can count the, the timeline this specifically with confirmation from two extra biblical sources and it aligns with the biblical narrative, well, there's no doubt now. No doubt at all. I very much recommend you watch those two videos. One is already on the community tab. I'm going to post the other one after this. Watch those two videos. Listen to what it says. Do more research. You'll see exactly what I was just shown. And it's going to change the way you look at everything. It's awesome. It is just, I can't, I can't get it out in words in English because our language doesn't have the right words for it. Greek, Koine Greek would probably be the better language for it. Hebrew even. But man, we're in the last 10 years. Knock seven off, we're in the last three years. A lot is going to happen. We've already had a lot happen this year. I told you guys that at the beginning of the year. This is going to be a year It's going to blow your mind. A lot of stuff's going to happen. We're there. There's no doubt about that. What are the next two years going to bring? We're in the year of wonders. Let's keep watching. Let's pray. Let's give God the glory. Please join me in giving God the glory. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. To lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. Father, I'm going to hold my hand up. Because we know in the Bible, the hands held the palms up is an act of receiving. Father, I pray and give thanks today for your word showing us the truth, that you have exposed information that is now coming clear to light to help us walk in faith and strength. You're answering, literally answering our prayers, giving us information that shows us where we are, that this day won't overtake us. Why? Because we have faith, first of all, but because we see the alignment happening. It is still just it's so amazing to me to watch you work. We see the world and how things are going haywire, and yet people are still getting saved. How everything's falling apart everywhere, pretty much. But people are still getting saved. How the satanic agenda is so open and right out front. They're not even, they can't hide it. You're exposing it. Those who are yours are turning away from it. And those who are the world's, who belong to him, are turning towards it. We can see it. It's awesome. And we have information now. We can count down that we're in the final moments. Literally the final moments. Father, what is going to happen next? What is going to change next? I'm excited to see it. And I, I, I feel like, well, I should be surprised. But I won't be surprised because you told us what's going to happen. It's amazing. Father, give us strength to continue forward. Help us clarify and prove this information true through your word. Help us to walk in faith, to love the appearing of our Lord Jesus, because we know we're right on the cusp of it. To let this world do what it's going to do, to let this world fall to the side, to, to ignore what it's trying to do, pulling us away, and instead focus on you in worship and in mercy and in grace and in glory. Father, I want to, by intercession, I lift up all my brothers and sisters. That you put this joy and this peace and this exhilaration and this faith in their hearts like you've done mine. That you open their eyes to see this information and to prove it. So that they too will long and love and watch for our Lord. I, by intercession, I lift up our government, our current administration. Father, open their eyes to the truth. And for this president, I pray you put a strong conviction on his heart of what your truth is. To all our elected leaders, open their eyes and give strong conviction to them. The world leaders, I know there's some that they have to play their part, but I still pray for them too. And Israel, I lift up Israel by intercession. Father, save your people. Save them. Because 
in the salvation, there is glory. And you get that glory. And our Lord Jesus is magnified and lifted up. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this information, this hope and encouragement. Thank you for this strength. May we every day be renewed with you, by your grace and with your grace. And may we every day be watching and waiting and wondering and longing and loving the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me for daily prayer. Please make sure at some time today you go to the community tab and watch those two videos. I don't know who Adelaide is. These people keep sending me messages. <laughs> Please watch those two videos. Think about the information that's in them. Consider it. Do your own research. And what you'll discover is, is prob probably exactly what I discovered. And it will be such a blessing to you. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I'll see you guys in the next video.